Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. So at nearly an hour long, it's unsurprising that the second episode of the Book of Boba Fett was chock full of really cool details that you may have missed. I'll be going over five of the more interesting ones in today's video, but also let me know if there's anything I missed or anything that you noticed down below. All right, so this first detail is really cool and takes us to Tashi Station. Yes, Tashi Station. We'll talk about that later, but I do have to give some credit to Ayanathem for pointing this out because it's something that I would not have noticed. Anyway, inside Tashi Station, the gang of hoodlums in there is playing on some sort of machine, and it definitely looks like a video game. It looks very 70s, very appropriate for Tatooine, given what we've seen of the planet in the past. But as it turns out, this wasn't some random special effect. It's actually footage from one of the very first video games ever, specifically Space War. Space War was a video game invented in 1962. It ran on the very Star Wars-looking PDP-1 mini computer, and in my mind, it's actually very, very important impressive, especially compared with video games I think of the 70s and 80s. It's multiplayer, there's two different spaceships, they fire these missiles at each other with a fading trail and there's like a black hole or a large star in the middle that can also consume you. There's gravity, inertia, fuel, it's pretty complex and pretty cool. I'm not sure whether this is exact footage or not, there does seem to be some differences, like the stars look a little bit different, so it could just be an animation meant to simulate the game, but that's definitely what it's meaning to portray. The game itself did not actually have music or sound like there is in the show, but it's a very cool little detail. And on that note, let's stick to Tashi Station. Yes, this is the same Tashi Station that Luke Skywalker mentions in Episode 4. And if you're wondering how I'm making this identification, well, it's actually pretty interesting. I covered this in an earlier video, but although they don't mention Tashi Station in the Book of Boa Fett, that's clearly what this is. There's a deleted scene in A New Hope which shows Luke visiting his friends at Tashi Station, and look at these two people. Are they maybe familiar? When you take the whole scene, you'll realize that not only has the Book of Boba Fett actually remade this set from a deleted scene for A New Hope, which is amazing, but has also included the characters of Fixer and Cammy. Fixer and Cammy were Luke's friends at the beginning of A New Hope, and now, two decades later, it seems like they've not managed to leave Tatooine, they're still hanging out on Tashi Station, and they're still together as a couple. Very cool little detail, I just love the fact that they went out of their way to make Tashi Station like this. This scene also reminded me of the beginning of Terminator 2, where Arnold walks in, beats everyone went up, then takes the dude's motorcycle, although of course, Boba is not naked, so. Continuing. My next detail is about flora and fauna. First of all, we have black melons, the things that they've been drinking from, officially named. They were present in Star Wars Legends, and they're also said to contain milk, which was also the case in Legends. I wasn't sure if they were going to keep that or go with water, but it's a cool little detail. Moving out to animals, aside from the massives, which of course appeared in Episode 1, we also saw one of my favorite Star Wars species, the wart. The wart is the frog-like thing that comes out of the ground. You also see it in episode 6 in front of Jabba's palace. I just think it's such a ridiculously fun design that I really, really love it. Regarding the creature the huts are eating, specifically the hut brother, some have suggested that it's a hujib, which was a creature that first appeared in Star Wars Legends. That's mostly, I think, because of the antenna, but there are some major differences. The fact that the hujib has bunny-like ears and only two legs being the primary ones. I was checking the Star Wars wiki to see if anyone had identified the creature, and apparently there's also a Tatooine rat, which is just an Earth-like rat. Somewhere in the episode, I'm not sure where, but yeah, let's continue. Speaking of the twins, a detail that probably a decent amount of you recognized was the fact that we know who this character is, at least almost certainly. This Wookiee who walks out, very intimidating, amazing costume design, is almost certainly, and I've never known how to say this guy's name, Black Kersantan? I'm just gonna call him K. Anyway, as of this point, K has been a comic-only character. He probably warns an entire video. I'm sure there are some out there now since the episode has released, but he was essentially a bounty hunter who frequently worked with Jabba the Hutt. He was also known to frequently travel or work with Dr. Afra. I wonder whether she will eventually be making her live action debut and whether we might see Triple Zero as well. This show is probably going to introduce lots of bounty hunters, rogues, and the like, so I can definitely see it happening. All right, so finally I want to talk about the amazing details we have of Moss Espa, and this is something I've talked about both in the breakdown of the trailer 
trailer for the show when it came out and a little bit in my review. So this is a pretty incredible scene here. They fly over Moss Aspa for like two seconds. I tweeted about this and presumably all of this footage will be used for other things in the future. I also wonder whether a lot of this is randomly generated, sort of like ILM did with the spaceships in the Rise of Skywalker, because there's so much detail here and it's really, really impressive. But one thing I wanted to mention is that as pointed out on Reddit, you can actually see the mayor's office in prior shots, which is really cool. But also I want to take a look at these spaceships. One of these is almost certainly an ST-70 assault ship, just like the Razor's Crest. Of course, it's not the Razor's Crest itself because that ship's been destroyed at this point, but they're probably reusing a model that they already had. This ship to me looks a lot like an action transport, like the type Cal and Card used. I can't really think of anything else that's similar. I know there was an action transport model in the prequels, but it looked a little bit different than this. I'm actually not sure if it's been updated, but I think it probably has, and that's what we're seeing here. This other ship in the top, not really positive. It could be another ST-70, but your guess is as good as mine. But guys, those are the five details that I thought were cool and worth mentioning. Is there something I missed? Is there something you want to talk about? Let me know all of that and more down below. Till next time though, guys, have a good one. Be safe and may the force be with you.